Number four, Nate Tice. What does the film tell you? Okay. So uh, I'm going to go with a rookie. And uh, I think uh, my favorite rookie in this whole thing, and I, I did, did like Najee Harris, but it was Michael Carter with the Jets. And okay. I think, and even watching the preseason game, I finally got to watch the actual film yesterday, is he looked fantastic. He really did. He His vision, my streamable, which is where I usually upload my clips and edit them before I put them on, wasn't working yesterday. So otherwise I would have tweeted these, but uh, missed out on that Twitter dopamine. But it's, uh, but you know, <laughs> but with Michael Carter, it's when he, I was writing him up, I gave him the same grade as Travis Etienne. So I actually would make this a twofer. I'm just going to talk about two rookie backs real quick. I, I would say Travis Etienne is overvalued right now. And then I think Michael Carter is undervalued. Uh, I, I would flip those two on where they're sitting right now. Um, I, cause I think Michael Carter one, he's going to be RB one there. Uh, I think week one, like even if maybe he's not starting, I think touch wise he is because he's too good not to play. Um, when watching North Carolina stuff, they pulled a lot of guys. We just talked about counter. They ran the crap out of that. They were on RPOs, um, off of that. But I thought anytime they ran zone, Carter looked phenomenal. Like he, ru he runs like, uh, like a diet Coke version of Alvin Kamara, like where he's just really kind of smooth, like not explosive, but just very smooth, good vision, good pace. And I, I just really liked him. It was just like a shorter version of that. And guess who runs outside zone? The Jets, they're going to be, they're going to be in a Kubiak Shanahan offense. I mean, full blown the first couple of plays. I was like, Oh yeah, there it is. That's, that's Shanahan's offense right there, there, then and there. He looked great in it. it. It's like, he has that vision. Even if the O-line's going to be okay, they got a couple, you know, Beckton's phenomenal. Um, the draft of the rookie uh, from USC at the left guard. I just think that offense kind of, you know, as we all know, lifts the floor, you know, just because it makes it so simple for everybody else. So I really do think he's, undervalued right now because i don't think people realize because he's a fourth round rookie i get that i guess I, I get that's a little bit of a leap of faith but you just got to look at it it's like i think he is the real deal and the film the, i know it's preseason but he did look good and the, the speed of play didn't look look like nothing to him so i was like okay cool all right cool what i saw north carolina is translating at least week one of preseason my biggest concern for carter is i he's smaller but he can run between the tackles i think that people want to put him as like a passing down back but like you said, I think his vision, his timing, and his burst when he has the opportunity is all good enough to run between the tackles. Does the coaching staff look at 5'8", 201 pounds, never touch the ball uh, too many times in college and just say, this is a guy that we can max him out at like 10 touches per game? Or do you think there's more that Carter can kind of evolve into? It's one of those, in theory, I'm sure going into the game, they go, hey, you know, we got to limit his touches throughout the season. And then coaches in the heat of the moment forget that shit right away. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is how it operates. Oh, there's a game Khalil Mack was supposed to be on a pitch count. He ended up playing 100% of the snaps one time. It was one of the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen. He's supposed to play like 40 snaps because we're saving him up for the Thursday game. And he ended up playing every snap of the game. You know, it's just what it is. Um, no, that that's a great thing you brought up because that is, was my one negative with him was I thought ideally – he would have another guy that could eat some carries with him that kind of like how he had in college, but I, not as truly split like that, but more of a 70, 30 type of thing. Uh, because yes, that does matter. And I, he at least made the 200 pound mark, which I do think is a big threshold for running backs. Uh, it's, it's really a big deal. Just holding up a wear and tear, not so much height. It's actually one of those things where the height and the weight actually helps him because yep. now he's a little more, <clears throat> a little more thick. <laughs> so it, that he's does short, not him. small. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, he's short, not small. And and that's – so, yes, I think where you're concerned does, does make sense. But how they're going to use him, I think they're, they're going to find touches in other ways where it's – at least he's getting outside. That's one benefit of the outside zone is that you're not running power where you're taking a yep. linebacker or a nose tackle shot every play just to the side. Boom. Those add up. It's a little more in space. So maybe it's a safety hit um, – a linebacker coming from the side, it might be a little more speed on it or a corner making a tackle. Just the hits are just maybe 10% less. Um, and that does add up over time. But no, that's a great, great point. That was a negative I had with him too. Yeah, I, I look back at some of the San Francisco backs, obviously with with Michael Four working there. And it was uh, Matt Breida was less than 200 pounds coming out of school and Raheem Moser was less than 200 pounds coming out of school. And obviously neither one, you know, is a full-time back. But what actually stands out to me, Nate, is if we continue to get the usage that we got in preseason week one with Michael Carter, he's going to continue to fall down our fantasy draft boards because um, Ty Johnson got the stars working that was without Tevin Coleman. So maybe we can galaxy brain this a little bit and say we might see the best Michael Carter in week one and not until then. Like yeah. this is maybe the positive element. And, and hey, I'm kind of getting excited about this, that 
if he drops down to like running back 33, running back 35, we can point to this clip and say, hey, while the usage wasn't there as a number one running back in preseason activity, the talent, the fit, the tape, it was all there. Again, we're still going to see what's going to happen in preseason week two and week three, but I'm with you. I think Hayden is too, that the fit just makes so much sense. The draft capital investment when comparing it to the rest of the roster makes sense. And they even said they wanted to spend a third round pick on them. They just didn't have one. And so they took him as soon as they could in the fourth round. Yeah, and, and no, that's all great points. And that's the thing is what's the kind of MO on Tevin Coleman at this point is he's going to get banged up. <laughs> you know, it's just, yep. it is what it is. Like, it, it, I love Tevin. I, I was there in Atlanta when we drafted him, but it's, that's what he is. And, but that's actually going to be kind of perfect because the times he is healthy, he's going to take those 10 touches away from Michael in, in the sense that I'll keep Michael Carter healthy. You know, it's kind of like it benefits both, but that's where I think where he does get banged up. And if he is healthy you know, early on the season, okay, okay, it's going to be one of those where it ascends. And how many times we see that in the Shanahan offense where it's like week four, week six, some random week, all of a sudden, boom, it's like, oh, there's another running back with 140 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would say that maybe take the early lumps where they're figuring out the rotation because I do think he is going to be their number one option. I, I just okay. think throughout this whole season, that's how it's going to go.